So you're building your first game. You've got the mechanics working, the core systems in place, and you've started putting your scenes together. But then it hits you. You don't have any trees, and you're not sure how to make them. Don't worry. In this video, I'll walk you through my methods for creating game-ready, stylized trees, along with a few alternative approaches you might want to try out. And if you stick around until the end, I'll share some bonus tips for bringing these trees to life inside Unity. Let's jump in. There are plenty of ways to model a tree in Blender. One of the fastest and most reliable options is the Sapling Tree Gen extension. You can grab it for free in the Get Extensions tab under Preferences. Once it's enabled, just press Shift plus A in the viewport, head over to the Curves menu, and add a sapling tree. This tool generates a tree made of curves based on the parameters you set. It comes with tons of controls, so it takes a little time to explore and figure out how to get the exact shape you want. But if you're going for a realistic tree and need something that iterates quickly, this add-on is perfect. It even includes a few presets to get you started. I use this method occasionally, like when I need quick test models or when I'm building realistic scenes. But for our game, I prefer making trees manually. That way, I can push for a more stylized look, focus on only the parts I really need, and avoid generating unnecessary geometry. Here's how I like to approach it. I like to start simple by adding a single vertex. From there, I'll extrude it to create an edge and then add a skin modifier in the modifiers tab. By extruding one vertex at a time, I can gradually build the basic shape of the tree. I keep things simple at first, then slowly add splits and adjust the branches as I go. The details can come later during sculpting where I'll refine the shapes more naturally. To smooth things out, I'll add a subdivision surface modifier to the stack. This helps soften sharp edges and gives me more geometry to work with. By selecting individual vertices and pressing Ctrl plus A, I can adjust the radius of the skin modifier on a per vertex basis, shaping thicker or thinner sections as needed. Once I'm happy with the overall silhouette, I'll apply the modifiers. If you want to stay safe, it's a good idea to keep a backup copy of the tree before applying anything, just in case you want to make changes later. After applying the modifiers, it's time to clean up the excess geometry. I'll start by selecting an edge, then expand the selection to every second edge from there. You can do this manually or use Control plus to grow the selection automatically based on a pattern. Next, go to Select, Select Loops, Select Edge Loops to grab all connected loops. With those selected, hit X and choose Dissolve Edges. This removes unnecessary loop cuts while keeping the shape intact. I'll repeat this process until I've cleaned up all the extra geometry. Once the cleanup is done, I'll switch over to sculpt mode to give the tree a more organic feel. Using the grab brush, I'll start bending and rotating branches just enough to break the symmetry and refine the silhouette. Next, I'll add a multi-resolution modifier and subdivide the mesh several times. The goal is to create a dense enough mesh to sculpt in finer surface details. With the clay brush, I'll add random bumps and crevices to mimic the texture of bark. Since our game's art style leans towards simplicity, I won't go too deep into micro details, just enough to sell the look. To add variation in thickness, I'll also use the inflate brush here and there. If you wanted smaller branches, the snake hook brush could help extrude them, but for this tree, I'll keep things simple.
Once I'm happy with the sculpt, I'll duplicate the mesh. For the game version, I'll go to the Multi-Res modifier, open the Shape panel, and select Apply Base. This updates the original mesh so it better matches the silhouette of the sculpt. After that, I'll remove the modifier, leaving me with a low-poly version that lines up perfectly with the high-poly sculpt, ideal for baking. Finally, I'll give the tree a quick UV unwrap using Smart UV Project, then neatly pack the islands with Packmaster. With that done, we're ready to move on to texturing. I won't go too deep into the texturing of the main tree trunk here since I've already covered that process in a previous video. If you'd like to learn more about how I create stylized materials or grab this substance painter material for free so you can use it in your own projects, you'll find a link in the description. For now, let's move on to the next step, creating the branches for the tree. If you pay close attention while playing or even just watching footage from a video game, you'll start to notice a common trick used in making trees. The base, the trunk, and maybe a few main branches is usually a solid 3D mesh. Sometimes these parts are animated, sometimes not, but they're always fully modeled. But as you look higher up into the crown of the tree, things change. Most of what you see up there is actually made from flat meshes, often called cards. These cards carry textures of branches, leaves, and clusters of foliage, giving the illusion of depth without needing thousands of polygons. This approach not only keeps performance optimized, but also makes it much easier to simulate effects like wind. And it's the same method I'll be using to create the branches for our stylized trees. These are the same foliage meshes I created for my video on making stylized foliage. I'll leave a link in the description if you want to check out how I built them step by step. The process for building the branch cards is very similar to what I showed in that video when working on grass and ivy. I start by shaping out a larger branch without any leaves. This acts as the main parent piece for the smaller ones. Then I create several variations of smaller branches and twigs. Some of these I keep bare, while others I duplicate and add leaves to so I end up with both versions to mix and match later. Once I've arranged my 3D branches, I bake the base color and normal maps onto a texture plane and save those textures for later use. Since I've already explained this baking process in detail in the foliage video, I won't go through it again here, but if you missed that one, feel free to check it out anytime for a full walkthrough of the method. Once the baking is finished, I bring the textures back into Blender and assign them to a plane. From there, I add a few loop cuts and start shaping the outline of the branches. It's important not to overdo the mesh density here. The goal is simply to have enough geometry to bend the branches and apply wind effects later on. One detail to pay attention to is the origin point. I always place it at the base of the branch since this makes positioning and animating the cards much easier down the line. The next step is to slightly deform the branch cards to give the tree a more natural, organic look. For this part, I recommend pulling up some reference photos of the type of tree you're building. Many trees are recognizable by the shape and angle of their branches, and getting those details right can really sell the design. Once the planes are bent into shape, I start assembling the main branch card. You can create as many variations as you want. In fact, the more variations you have, the more natural the tree will look. To place the smaller branches, you can use snapping tools to align them to the faces of the main branch card using their origin points. In my example, I'm parenting all the smaller branches to the main one. That's because I want to show you a little unity trick later, which requires the smaller branches to remain separate. Normally though, it's best to merge these cards together as much as possible to reduce draw calls. Once you've built a few main branch variations, start attaching them to your main 3D trunk to form a dense tree crown. 
I'm doing this manually because I like the extra control and the handcrafted feel it gives. But if you're pressed for time, there are faster methods. You can use particle systems or set up a geometry node scatter system. For this video though, I'll keep things simple and stick to the manual approach. I've exported the meshes into three files. The first one is the main trunk, which I won't be doing anything special with. It'll just serve as a static model in the scene. The second file contains the main branch cards, the ones I used as parents when assembling. These are merged into a single mesh, since I only plan to add wind effects to them. The third file holds the smaller branches. Now, as I mentioned before, this isn't the most optimized way of exporting. Ideally, you'd merge everything into fewer meshes to reduce draw calls. You'll also notice here that I made a mistake. I accidentally set the origin of these meshes to the 3D cursor, which undid the step I showed earlier where I placed the origins at the base of the branches. I'll explain later why this oversight matters. Once that's sorted, I'll import the .fbx files into Unity and create the materials. If you're interested in custom shaders, let me know in the comments. Because for our Evergrow project, we built a custom shader to push the stylized look further, and it's a really useful skill to pick up for your own projects. I'll assign our main shader to the trunk material, and for the branches, I'll use the shader with the wind effect. I'll also hop into Photoshop and create alpha masks for alpha clipping. The alpha mask tells Unity which pixels should be visible and which should remain transparent, giving us those clean branch and leaf silhouettes. And now for that final little trick. I wanted to create an animation where the smaller branches gradually grow over time. That's why setting the origin point at the base of each branch was so important. I could have simply keyframed the scale using the pivot at the roots, which makes the branches look like they're sprouting naturally. Unfortunately, I had already saved over my Blender file with the origin set to the world center, so I had no way to roll it back. The workaround was to just animate them from the center, which, as you'll see, doesn't quite give the same effect. Still, here's how it works. I'll select all the branches in the crown, hit record on the timeline, and scale them down to nearly zero for the first keyframe. Then, I'll move the timeline forward and scale them back up to full size. Inside Unity, I hook this animation into our custom framework so it triggers at a specific point in the level. While not perfect, it adds a lot of life to the scene and shows how simple tricks can bring your trees to life. Of course, you don't have to follow this method exactly. This is just one way to do it. If you want to try it out for yourself, we've uploaded the project files for free on our Gumroad page. You'll be able to see exactly how the branch cards were attached, plus a bonus version where I used a particle system to scatter branches automatically. And if you'd like a step-by-step -step guide on how to bake textures for foliage cards, check out the video I linked in the description where I walk through that process in detail. Thanks so much for watching, and as always, I'll see you in the next one.